with a bit of a breaking news out of the state of Idaho. Uh, and it is concerning the man that is accused of killing those four University of Idaho students. Court documents reveal that Brian Kohlberger will be appearing in court next Monday at noon Eastern time in Latah County, Idaho, after a grand jury has apparently indicted him. He faces four counts of first degree murder and one count of burglary in the November stabbing deaths of Madison Mogan, Kaylee Gonzalez, Zana Carnodal, and Ethan Chapman. Now when Kohlberger appears in court on Monday, this is he's gonna this will be an arraignment now and he, he'll enter his plea uh, and then um, that means this will go to a jury trial assuming he pleads not guilty. Um, this is a grand jury indictment meaning there's no need for that June preliminary hearing. That that was scheduled. In fact, they had set out a week in June for this preliminary hearing. You can indict one, uh, people one of two ways, either through a grand jury or through a preliminary hearing in the state of Idaho. And uh, now prosecutors can lit, uh, to totally skip that preliminary hearing process altogether because he has been indicted by a grand jury, according uh, to our Chanley Painter, who has um, spoken to the uh, lawyer representing the Gonzalez family, and uh, the family will be there. Katie Gonzalez's family will be there for this arraignment on Monday um, um, in in Idaho. So, let's talk about it. Uh, joining us now this hour, is Melissa Pinkleton. She is a uh, retired officer with the Nashville Police Department. And um, Melissa, this was this preliminary hearing was set. Um, it, it was set months ago, and they put a week out, meaning this was going to be an extensive hearing where the state was going to basically show their cards to some extent. Now, they wouldn't have brought all of the witnesses on. It wouldn't have been a full trial, but it's a mini trial. And and that is done for different reasons uh, in terms of strategy uh, wise. But now we're not going to hear anything real because they have decided to go grand jury route. That is not a public venue. Um, Thoughts on this decision not to come out and give the public, but more importantly, the defense, um, kind of a, 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 a little look at this trial strategy, and, and it's kind of a dry run on some levels. Um, your thoughts on, on why they would go this route? I think it's a really smart decision that they are not doing this that way and they're going to the grand jury which will be sealed and that probably is because there is so much overwhelming information they don't want to have the claim that the jury pool is tainted by putting so many of this so much out there as public this is a highly highly public case there are a lot of details that are out there in the public but 2,000 different pieces of information have just been handed over as discovery it's my understanding that's breaking. And so this might be the better route for prosecution so that defense can't go, hey, we, we're not going to get a fair trial because all of this is out there. So, And I do believe you're going to get an indictment from the grand jury because what do they say? You can indict a ham sandwich in a grand jury. So yeah. I don't think that's going to be a problem. But I think this is a smart strategy in the prosecution part. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think that has already taken place. Um, the this is a way to avoid that uh, scrutiny, but also to your point, the potential jury pool pollution, um, and which can be used for different reasons. You can get a change of venue out of it, um, or you can also uh, use it at the end of the day as a reason to appeal, uh, saying that everybody had seen everything. Because let's face it, anything that comes out about this case, that comes out about this suspect, any little tidbit people are just absorbing. There are so many questions and this was such a heartbreaking case. Um, Kaylee Gonzalez's father, uh, Steve Gonzalez, uh, told ABC News, uh, quote, I can't wait to see the evidence and then I'm gonna bring it. And he's gonna realize that this is the family that's gonna make sure he doesn't uh, get away with it. And, he has been, of all of the parents and loved ones, he's the one that has been out in the forefront. Um, and Chanley Painter has talked to the family attorney uh, this morning. They're aware of it. They're going to be traveling down there. You've dealt with family members um, in, in crime situations and as crime victims. I can't imagine what they're going through and what they're about to go through because this, they're nowhere near the end stages of, of the justice form uh, a part of this e equation um, what do they have ahead of them 
they have a lot of heartbreak and hard days and horrible times ahead of them. And yes, this particular father has been very outspoken and I have dealt with victims of of homicides and you know it's a very delicate balance because you obviously you want to comfort them and validate what they're going through and but also uh, this particular father i wish i could have or wish somebody would have in the beginning if it was possible and maybe somebody did pull him aside and say look i know you're passionate i know you want answers i know you're out there advocating but but also let the police do what they're supposed to be doing and any information that you the police give you please don't put out there because that can hinder the case so don't get me wrong i'm not trying to criticize the father he's in an impossible position i couldn't imagine but i would like just to see him restrained a little bit so that it could be a little bit more helpful to the prosecution's case but they're in for a lot of heartbreak and hard days and i can't imagine having to sit there in the courtroom i have five kids from 21 down all the way to eight and i couldn't possibly imagine what they're getting ready to go through mm. yeah to lose a daughter um, would be horrible um the he Kohlberger, when he made his appearance in Pennsylvania, he did. He looked all around the courtroom and he found his parents and he, he was, you know, making kind. When he was in Idaho, he had made two appearances in January, he was looking straight ahead, didn't look back. Gonzalez was back there wanting to connect, uh, make eye contact. Let's uh, uh, play a little bit from that status hearing back in January where, where Kohlberger finds out his, the charges against him. It alleges that the defendant, Brian C. Koberger, on or about November 13th of 2022, in Lake Talk County, state of Idaho, did unlawfully enter a residence located at 1122 King Road, Moscow, with the intent to commit the felony crime of murder in violation of Idaho Code 18-1401 and 1403. The maximum penalty for that offense if you plead guilty or are found guilty is not less than one year in prison, no more than 10 years in prison, and or a $50,000 fine or both. Do you understand? Yes. Count two alleges that you committed the felony offense of murder in the first degree. It alleges that the defendant, Brian C. Koberger, on or about November 13th, 2022, in Lake Talk County, State of Idaho, did willfully, unlawfully, deliberately, with premeditation and with malice of forethought, kill and murder Madison Mogan, a human being, by stabbing Madison Mogan from which she died. I was a part of that hearing um, back in January, and you notice that when, when the, you had a shot of Kohlberg, he was looking straight ahead, wanted nothing to do with the gallery. Jesse Law is joining our conversation. She's a defense Hello. attorney in Atlanta, Georgia. Jesse, good afternoon to you. Um, your reaction to the state's decision to go grand jury route and avoid the preliminary hearing, which, of course, um, we were all looking forward to because we were going to get a real feel for the state's case and the evidence against Brian Kohlberger. We have that... Um, we, we, we have that uh, preliminary um, uh, charging document, which gave us a, a, a lot, um, that, that probable cause affidavit, but this was going to be sort of uh, a first run. Why go grand jury and avoid the prelim, you think? The prelim, you're going to have a hearing and dispute. You're going to have the defense and the prosecution go at it to challenge every scintilla of evidence to uh, undermine the probable cause in this case. Uh, our, um, our guests previously talked about the rigors that the victims and the victim's family have to go through for a preliminary hearing, and they will be brutalized during a preliminary hearing because they're going to go through each and every piece of evidence. I think the grand jury route was a much easier route to take for the state because there are multiple offenses and get the grand jury to review it without having the nit the bickering from the defense and also not having to put the victims and their families through the ringer of having to hear the evidence all over again and then having the defense trying to mitigate the state's case and trying to say it's impossible. I think the victims uh, on, on, on that this my, my client could never have done that to the victims and maybe even try to put the victims in bad light to say somebody else could have done it. I mean, why put them through it? So the grand jury process, a lot, uh, a lot easier, a lot more efficient and a, a lot more pacifying for the victims. Yeah, we did see a bit of that already, um, Melissa, with the defense 
filing that notice that they um, they wanted that f the fourth roommate to appear at the prelim. They you know had a subpoena out, and then uh, eventually the parties agreed that they would both depose that individual, um, and, and she wouldn't have to come. But in that um, motion, they. They basically articulated that they believed that that fourth roommate had exculpatory evidence um, helping Brian Kohlberger. And, you know, we are all trying to figure out what, what that is. It's probably literally, right, a, a witness statement that m m maybe I, I thought I heard voices or some, some little thing that they are trying to exploit. But to Jesse's point, um, and Melissa, you could talk on this with your law enforcement background. She could have said anything, right? And in multiple interviews during that period of time, they were looking for the individual responsible, and the defense is going to jump all over any inconsistencies. Absolutely. And this is frequent and common. And look, look, police officers have a very hard job to do, especially homicide detectives when they're interviewing suspects. But as we know, just like the media does or other people do, there could be one little snippet that is said and taken out of context and then put into a different light and brought in there as, as you said, exculpatory evidence. And whatever it is, I'm sure it will be explained away. I, I don't know. I don't know what it possibly could be, but I do not believe for one minute that that roommate had anything to do or was involved in any way whatsoever. But whatever that quote unquote exculpatory evidence is, I'm sure will be explained away and is probably really nothing in the grand scheme of everything else that they have. Right, but they could jump on it. And, and to Jesse's mm -hmm. point, the um, the everyone will be watching this preliminary hearing, so now they avoid it. They don't have to um, have it come out at this juncture. Let's remind everybody uh, about some of the items seized from Kohlberger's parents' home in Pennsylvania. Three knives, numerous items of dark colored clothing, including dark clothing in a laundry basket, black face masks, gloves, a knit hat and black pants, multiple pairs of boots, criminology, psychology book, seats and seat cushions, headrests, brake and gas pedals, floor mats, this is from the car obviously, door mm -hmm. panel, seat belt, uh, visor. The we haven't heard much from, you know, in terms of the return on, on the search warrants. And, and But all these things were tested, um, Jesse. And from what we know, there is a mini mountain of evidence against Kohlberger. If there's anything more um, that they have been able to mine from these search warrants at, at Kohlberger's home in Washington and then also in Pennsylvania, I mean, this seems like from the outside, a pretty solid case. Is that going too far, Jesse? I, 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 I think they have a relatively good case. I wouldn't classify it as a solid case. And I'm looking at that litany of items. You know, I think some of my former clients could be murder suspects because it seems like pretty <laughs> standard stuff in a car. So, uh, you know, well, yeah, it's, but if you've it's got if you've got one of those four. Uh, victims' DNA on your brake pedal, or you know, uh, you know, then they, it's game they can, and they say it could be explained away. I don't know what his relationship was. Say he could uh, possibly put down how that person's DNA could end up in the pedal. But you know, glasses, visors, seat cushions, so forth. You know, and the knives. You know, some people do carry knives in their car. Some people carry guns in their car. But that doesn't make them a murder suspect. But um, yeah, they have relatively good. Um, uh, you know, wireless communication, their, their placement of um, the, the uh, cell phone towers uh, to place him at the scene and so forth. But just that litany of items alone doesn't really, you know, raise any alarm bells in my head about him. But, uh, you know, you, 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 they have a case, but, it's, uh, but given the number of documents they're going to go through and keeping in mind that even if there's exculpatory evidence that we've been tinting about, the state is required to disclose that. So even though they've got the grand jury indictments, they're still required to disclose that. Yes, they are. And uh, they apparently have already dropped off a few truckloads of discovery for the defense to uh, mull over. But uh, again, the, the breaking news at this hour is that there will be no June preliminary hearing. Rather, uh, Brian Kohlberger will be appearing in an Idaho court on Monday morning, noon Eastern time, nine o'clock local Pacific time in Idaho. And at that point, he we are expecting he'll be indicted on the murders of the four college students.
and then it will be on to trial. Likely they'll set a trial date, likely into some point next year, and um, and then away we go. But the breaking news, no preliminary hearing in June. Kohlberger will be in court along with the family, at least of the Gonzalez family, but I'm sure other family members will be there as well and will be there uh, and watch it together right here on Court TV.